Welcome to this first week of this MOOC. During this week, we will introduce you to the topic of public health engineering and see how engineers can have a significant impact to reduce the mortality and morbidity encountered in many humanitarian contexts. You will learn about the link between health and water, sanitation and hygiene, so-called WASH activities. Engineers in humanitarian assistance should have a good understanding on how infectious diseases are transmitted. This is why you will be introduced to different environmental transmission pathways of diseases and we will see some measures to be taken to prevent the spread of diseases. In particular, we will talk about water quality and quantity requirements in complex emergencies, as well as vector control measures. In this video, we will answer to the question why public health engineering matters in humanitarian crises. In order to do so, we need to understand the public health approach that guides humanitarian assistance of many humanitarian organizations. It will help us to explain the role of the public health engineer. Finally, we will learn to identify some of the risks that put health populations particularly at risk during humanitarian situations. Public health is defined as the art and science of preventing disease, prolonging life and promoting health through the organized effort of society. How it is translated into humanitarian action? Let's go back to 1979, at the Thai-Cambodian border, where more than one million refugees had gathered in refugee camps. At that time, humanitarian assistance was mainly devoted to surgical and curative care. Activities dealing with water supply, sanitation or nutrition were perceived as secondary. Facing a high rate of mortality and morbidity in these refugee camps due to diarrhea and vector-borne diseases, an ICRC doctor named Pierre Perrin came up with the, what we called the Pyramid of Health model, an idea that helped to change the way the ICRC and other humanitarian organizations respond to humanitarian crises. This model advocated to move emergency health programs towards a broader public health orientation in order to preserve life and health and ensure respect for people's dignity. At the top of the pyramid of health are the activities related to curative care, that is, medical interventions generally done at the field hospital when people are already sick or injured. In the middle, are prevention measures such as vaccinations, distribution of medicines, or health education, while at the foundation of the pyramid are two key building blocks, nutrition and public health engineering, which, usually in humanitarian context, aim to provide an adequate drinking water supply, a proper excretory management, runoff and wastewater disposal, collection and disposal of refuse, and medical waste and effective vector control interventions. The IDB and the pyramid of health is that it makes no sense to manage health issues of vulnerable people only from the top with medical curative care. If their immediate environment is the cause of their unhealthy state. Tackling the root of the problem, particularly for infectious diseases, rather than only treating patients, is much more effective to reach out a large population. This approach was implemented in the 80s and very well documented researches have shown that the provision of adequate food, clean water, sanitation and shelter activities were much more effective than most medical programs to tackle diarrhea and vector bone diseases. This is why this model advocates for public health engineering and nutrition activities to be done in close collaboration with medical activities in order to achieve a public health objective. In order to understand the role of the public health engineer, we have to look at the interaction between a population and its environment. All that can be schematized in the following diagram. We see that in one side, the elements originating in the environment which are necessary to maintain a population's life and health, such as water, food, energy, raw materials for work, materials for building a shelter, and also vector of diseases, such as rats and mosquitoes. And 
On the other side, the waste that the population discharges into the environment in the form of human excreta, garbage, and liquid waste. Between these two poles, a vicious cycle may be created. Infectious diseases can be transmitted by direct contact within the population, but also through the environment. I give you an example. If human waste are disposed inadequately into the environment, it can lead to a proliferation of pathogens contained in the faces, in the water, for instance. As a result, it might lead to an increase of incidence of diarrheal diseases within the population, which itself leads to an increase of the contamination of the environment, which leads to an increase of pathogens, and so on. A vicious cycle. Public health engineering relies on the concept that certain hazards, to be infection pathogens or chemicals, move through the environment and cause harms to humans. Therefore, public health engineering measures focus on preventing the creation of hazards, its transport, and the people from being exposed to it once encountered. In the case of human waste, for instance, eh, which uh, we mentioned earlier, we cannot avoid its creation. But the public health engineer can reduce the spread of human waste in the environment by setting, for instance, a proper sanitation system. It can also treat water and promote proper food hygiene practices in order to reduce the exposure of people to faces contained in the contaminated food or water. Another example, in the case of the Cambodian refugee camp we have seen earlier in the video, the fact that the camp was moved away from the breeding site of the mosquitoes result actually in the reduction of the malaria mortality by half and the incident rate by two-thirds. Now we understand that the role of the engineer is actually to put the barriers at the creation, transport and exposures to hazards to improve the health. Now, because one barrier rarely functions at 100%, public health engineers should put multiple barriers. In order to know where and when to put this barrier to stop the vicious cycle of transmission of the disease, the public health engineer should have a very good understanding of the transmission cycle of the disease. In a humanitarian context, the role of the public health engineer is crucial because the population are particularly at risk of the vicious cycle. Indeed, factors such as overcrowding to the influx of displaced persons, deterioration of essential services and infrastructure such as healthcare, water and sanitation systems, poor housing conditions in temporary settlements or damaged structures, lower immunity due to malnutrition or lack of healthcare, all that aggravate the vulnerability of the population to infectious diseases. Let's summarize this first lesson. Communicable diseases such as the diarrheal diseases and malaria are a major cause of mortality and morbidity in humanitarian contexts, where the population is particularly at risk of contamination. In order to protect the health of those affected by humanitarian crises, it is absolutely crucial to ensure adequate shelter, water, sanitation and food, and provide basic health care. As such, it required a collaboration between these different sectors to achieve a truly integrated public health approach in the humanitarian response. It is the role of the public health engineer to put the barriers in the environmental transmission pathways of diseases through the implementation of measures dealing with water supply, excreta management, runoff and wastewater disposal, hygiene promotion, collection and waste disposal of refuse and medical waste, and vector control. Depending on the organization, this public health engineer is called the environmental health specialist, the wash specialist, or the water and habitat, such as in the ICRC. Now, in order to design a good public health engineering intervention, the public health engineers require a very good understanding of the transmission cycle of diseases. And that is what we will explain in the next videos.